but the government is telling us that inflation is going down. So how does the government even come up with these numbers? We're going to talk about that briefly. And then in this video, we're going to give you the tips and strategies that we are using right now to deal with the real cost of inflation. If you don't know us, I'm Larry. And I'm Hope. And we're from Under the Median, where every week we bring you videos on practical frugality. The government is basing inflation numbers on something called the Consumer Price Index index. Larry is going to read verbatim exactly what it says on the government website. The Consumer Price Index, or the CPI, is a measure of the average change over time in the prices paid by urban consumers for a representative basket of consumer goods and services. The CPI measures inflation as experienced by consumers in their day-to-day -day living expenses. No, I don't think so. I don't think the government understands what it is to be an average consumer. So do you think the government is giving an accurate assessment of inflation? We'd love to know what you think. Tell us in the comments section. The question is not what the government is saying what inflation is. To be honest right. with you, it doesn't right. really matter. No, you know what matters? It matters how those prices are affecting you and what are those strategies, those frugal strategies that we are doubling down on right now in order to help us to deal with the cost of inflation. The first one goes without saying, and that is budget tracking and spending analysis. If you're not looking at your real numbers in black and white, it's really hard to know how you need to pivot. All you know is yeah. it's painful when you spend <laughs> money every single week at the grocery store. The alleviation of that pain point begins when you have actually tracked what you have spent every single 30 days. You can use an app like You Need a Budget. My sister has used You Need a Budget for years and years and absolutely loves it. We've told you in the past and we'll give them a plug again. We use the free Every Dollar yeah. app by Dave Ramsey and it works great for us to track our daily expenses. When we total those expenses once a month and we track those expenses from month to month, we use spreadsheets that I actually created for our use. You can get your hands on a set of those spreadsheets as well as all of the budgeting forms that we use. We call it our Frugal Finances Planner and we'll make sure there's a link to that planner in the description of this video. This way you can analyze where your money is going and you can identify areas where you need to cut back mm -hmm. and optimize your spending. Strategy number two is meal planning. Mm -hmm. Meal planning is very important. You're going to plan your meals. You're going to spend exactly what it's going to take to fulfill that plan so that you're not overspending and buying things that you don't need to buy. When it comes to planning meals, the best thing that you can do is plan those weekly meals around what is already on sale at yes. the grocery store. Yes. When you do that consistently, then the amount of money you're spending every month on groceries will drop. Why? Because you're planning your meals consistently around items and ingredients that cost you the lowest amount available. Meal planning and looking for lost leader items, those are two of the tactics that we used over the last 12 months when we dropped our grocery budget to $200 a month in 2023 for our family of four. We did a whole video about that topic and we revealed all of our top strategies for dropping your grocery budget. And these are strategies that really do work right now in 2024. Yes. We're gonna make sure there's a link to that video, guys. It'll be up above and also in the description of this video. Here's a strategy that we've really been doubling down on, especially this week. And what I noticed while we were in the mm -hmm. store, I didn't see anybody else doing exactly what Hope was doing in terms of how she was spending money, saving a lot of money, getting good deals, and doing some of that meal planning. This strategy is near and dear to my heart, guys. I'm gonna pull some items over here within camera range and I'll explain to you exactly what these are. We noticed recently that our local Hy-Vee grocery store began offering a limited number of coupons every week. It was Hy-Vee's equivalent of the Kroger loss leader items. Yeah. In this case, they were coupons that really dropped the amount that you would spend on specific items. I'm gonna show you exactly what we got, and then I'm gonna show you a super neat tip on how to take the items that you're able to get at low prices and to make meals out of them. We got these 
these handy dandy pizza crusts. For those of you who think I never ever buy convenience foods, here you go. <laughs> these are Hy-Vee pizza crusts. They were 25 cents each with the coupon. Now, this is something that Larry noticed that I did not notice. He looked at the coupons, he goes, oh, it's limit four. I hadn't even thought to look for that. So when you have a coupon, <laughs> make sure that you're buying up to the limit because believe me, for 25 cents each, we bought... Four, we bought the limit. Four of them. Yeah. Stick with me, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can meal plan using something like this that you got at a super low price. Yeah, there's a little bit more to the story than just pizza crust. <laughs> Second thing I got, Manwich. Yeah, we make sloppy joes out of this. This was yeah. also 49 cents. It was limit one, so you notice there's only one in my hand. And here's the last thing we found. This was also limit one. This was 49 cents. This was tomato, basil, and garlic pasta sauce, the hy brand, and that was marked to 49 cents each. Let me, also, say, let me say this, that last item that Hope held up, that pasta, the regular price on that mm -hmm. is $2.29. They lowered it all the way down to 49 cents with the coupon that makes it really worth going to the store and locating and finding these items. And you will see that I spent just $2 on all of those <laughs> items. But, I mean, that's great, right? But what's my handy dandy tip for how you can take these items and you can create meals out of them? Here's my tip, listen up and then I'm gonna tell you exactly how to use it. <laughs> Think outside the box. Yeah. Just because this says pizza crust on the outside doesn't mean that you need to use it just for pizza crust. No, my friend. You can roll this out into a rectangle and then you can cover the center of it with a little bit of this pasta sauce. <laughs> and then you can choose what else. You can use some plant-based toppings that would go on pizzas to put in there or you can use some meat. And then you can roll it up and you can cut it into circles just exactly like you would if you were making cinnamon rolls. You're gonna bake it off in about a 400 degree oven for about 15 minutes, and you're gonna have really nice little rolls that are filled with pizza flavorings that you can, that's like a grab and go lunch. Now, thinking outside of the box as well, you can also take this you can roll it into smaller circles, like let's say six inch circles. You're gonna put the pizza toppings just on half of that circle, fold the circle over, crimp it closed, and you're gonna make calzones, which once again are like little hand pies filled with pizza fillings. And then you can also, of course, use this and you can make a traditional pizza, but think outside the box. Let's talk about that with the manwich. With the manwich, I'm gonna mix it with some cooked lentils. I'm gonna add some more spices to it, and I'm gonna use this for the base for a shepherd's pie. Bake that in the oven at 350 for about 30 minutes, and I've taken this and I've created a casserole type thing that's gonna feed us for at least two nights. And that, my friends, is how you parlay $2 worth of ingredients that you got on sale at the grocery store and you feed your family for not one but several different nights because you my friend have just learned how to think outside the box. If you found what Hope just shared kind of a wow moment and you liked it hit the like button that kind of helps with the way that YouTube spreads this information around and also if you're not subscribed to our channel subscribe. The next strategy that we are doubling down on in order to deal with the cost of rising prices is negotiating and comparison shopping. Never should you hit that big red buy button before you have checked to see if there are any discounts available. Now, one of the ways that I consistently find discounts online and get cash back at the same time is that I use Rakuten. It's my very favorite app to use for saving money when I'm shopping online. There'll be a link in the description of the video so you'll be able to find it. You notice Hope said negotiate and mm -hmm. comparison mm -hmm. shop. You can negotiate things like services, mm -hmm. uh, your internet, your phone service, anything that you're signed up to, you can do, do you know some negotiating on. You're also gonna ask about their price matching policies, mm -hmm. whether they were matched online prices. Sometimes yeah. their online price for the exact same company is lower online than it is in the store. If they won't match that online price, especially if it's for their own company, if they won't match that in the physical store, stand there in the store, open the app, 
order it online and push free free shipping and delivery to your local store <laughs> you might have to go back the next day when they say oh look your delivery is here mm -hmm. even if it's sitting on the shelf right in front of you but you will save money by doing that if they absolutely refuse to match the price you're also going to ask if they are going to give you a discount because you are paying cold hard cash and sometimes uh, you need a discount we've gotten between three and eight percent depending on the store when we offer to pay them cash and the other thing that we would suggest before we move forward to the next tip is you are layering as many of those discount opportunities as possible yes are you able to use a coupon are you able to use cash are you able to layer on top of that getting cash back from something like Rakuten when you shop? Mm -hmm. Are you also able to layer something that they're going to give you because you have the store loyalty card? I just did this last week at Walgreens and I stacked and layered about three or four different levels of discounts to get the absolute best deal possible. Our sixth strategy is energy conservation and efficiency. Now, this is something that you can do all around your house. You can change out your light bulbs, put in LED bulbs. They're much more efficient if you haven't already done so. Make sure items are shut off if you're not using them. Don't leave lights turned on in a room if you're not in the room. Maybe cut some of the lights down that are in the room that you're currently in. In. You don't have to have yeah. all of them on. I use this strategy when I'm driving a car. I love driving the cars and trying to get the highest amount of miles per gallon. I use that every time I drive. I hit the reset mm -hmm. on the trip odometer, which also gives me the mileage readout. And I look to see how did I do yesterday? How am I doing today? And I try to work on getting the very best conservation out of our gas consumption. One of the things that we have noticed consistently, so these are really two separate tips. We're talking about consumption of energy around your house and also consumption of things like gasoline and wear and tear yeah. on your car. So those are two separate, they like are. maximizing your gas mileage. <laughs> but I think there is something that both of these have in common. Mm -hmm. And that is that some of the feedback we've received is that people don't do a lot of tips in these areas because they think that small changes won't make a difference. Yeah. Let's consider, for example, a programmable thermostat. Hmm. You can save somewhere between uh, 8 and 15 percent on your energy bill when you get a programmable thermostat and you actually program the thermostat. <laughs> There's like a caveat there. If you get yeah, one you, you that's have to programmable, program you actually have to program it and use it the way it's intended to be right, used. Right. But one of the things that a lot of people don't understand is that when you get a programmable thermostat, you need to check with your energy company first. In our area, our energy company offers up to a 100% rebate when you purchase a specific model of programmable thermostat. Here's the truth. There are probably 50 different ways, easy ways that you could lower your home energy bill. We've seen it time and time again with viewers on the channel that they have employed some of these tips we've given and they have indeed lowered their home energy bill. So it works. Let me say this about the gas and the car. When you're driving for the best gas mileage, mm -hmm. more than likely you're driving for the best way your car functions. Mm -hmm. You're going to get more mileage out of your brakes because you're not going to hit the brakes as hard. You, those brake shoes are going to last longer. You're, you're going to get better mileage out of your motor because you're not as hard on it. You're starting out easy. You're slowing down easy with it. And you're probably going to get more miles on your vehicle. It's going to hold up better without as many breakdowns. So there are so many advantages to doing these things. That was kind of a two for one tip and we're going to move on to the next strategy. This is something we think is super important to consider. Your ROI, return on investment. Yes. What you want to do is you want to begin by considering what the initial cost of the item is that you're putting into your home. You also want to look at maintenance costs 
on that item. How much does it cost to maintain it, to mm-hmm. keep it going? Does it take a lot of filters? Does it require a lot of extra maintenance, maybe maintenance from a professional that has to come in and do some things to it? How much is it going to cost you to own and operate that item over the life of mm-hmm. that item? And remember, before you purchase, you are going to make sure that you are going to get all the discounts available because those discounts up front affect that ROI. ROI is that moment at which you pay yourself back in the terms of savings for the amount you put out for that item. You're also looking for an item that will outlast its ROI. Yes. You don't want to find yourself (laughs) paying yourself back in your budget and then all of a sudden the thing is no use to you at all. You want to make sure it's going to last a significant amount of time past the time that you are paying yourself back and you have reached that magical number of return on investment. We mentioned some of the strategies that I used in order to drop our family's grocery budget to $200 a month for 2023. We just sort of skimmed the surface of some of the strategies that we use. You want to get all of those strategies. We did a whole video on it. It is right over there. Take a look. So do you think that the government's assessment of inflation... Inflation. Inflation. We have a lot of trouble with inflation. So bad. (laughs) 